So I'm going to cover some of the latest updates that we have in a new release of CQG Desktop. Uh, it's on stage now and coming to production this weekend. It's version 3.2 and it is a pretty significant um, update for us. There's a lot of good functionality that I know that people have been waiting for and so we'll dive right in here. Uh, first, a couple of the general updates. One of the changes that we've made is we've added a full screen button here up in the upper right of any widget and so I'll go full screen for the chart and the effect of it you see is that any widget and that it's tabbed with, those that it's tabbed with, will go full screen. And so this chart widget went full screen. I can also toggle through the tabs that are with it. And then just like with Windows, it switches to an icon for restore. And then I restore my previous layout. So this is kind of the first step in a progression of um, some other functionality that we'll be building for Windows management, uh, but full screen is the first one. Okay. The next thing is that we have added a connectivity monitor. Down here at the bottom left, there's an icon that shows uh, that it's green and connected right now. And if you click on that icon, then we bring up a uh, dialog that shows some of my connection status, that my uh, connectivity to CQG and its latency uh, for the last 10 minutes, the bandwidth usage, as well as um, any disconnects that I might have had. And the intended purpose of this is if a customer is having difficulty with their connection, and they call support, then this is one method that we might ask for a screenshot from the customer um, to help us diagnose what's going on with their connection. Uh, you can also see some system info that we gather from the user's machine as well as the, um, the data usage for the last 24 hours that, that the user has been logged in and any potential system messages coming from our operations group would be shown here. There's an entry point into the send feedback dialog. Uh, so if you're having, if the customer is having issues, they can type in issues, uh, attach screenshots, as well as logs. We've also done some performance fixes for customers who are um, have access to many accounts, like our brokerage and FCM partners. Uh, there is a, a fix that we're, we're adding um, in 3.2 where the performance will be much better. And I'll go, I'll skip over to the other charting enhancements that we've made. Um, I'll go full screen on this chart. <clears throat> and then when I have cursor mode on, where this cross icon is blue, shows that the mode is on. Now when I roll over bars, I see this indicator um, and I, I highlight the bar, but over here on the left side where the list of studies is, then I can see the current value changing for the, the bar that I have my cursor on. And that is for uh, we started to list out all of the study curves and for all of the studies. You can see down here for volume, the daily, uh, the volume for each one of these bars um, as I roll over. You can toggle this um, on and off in the manage chart dialog. I can open it up here and there's a new checkbox called cursor value. You can manage it there, but the fast way to manage the visibility for all of the elements over here on the left side is with this eyeball icon. You can click this um, icon and quickly hide all of the study values to clean off the chart and then quickly turn it back on. 
So that is cursor value on chart. On the trading side, we have some highly anticipated features. Uh, we have bracket orders, trailing limit and stop orders, as well as iceberg orders. We've also improved the post uh, trade workflow as well. And I'll show you that first. So I'm going to go ahead and place a, I'm going to reduce my size here, and place a market order. And um, I get a fill report as usual. But now in the fill report, we have a drop down where I can access additional order actions. So in this case, I just placed a regular market order and I didn't have a stop loss on it. And so I want to place a stop loss. I can go to this uh, menu item and say place stop loss. As you see here, this is um, this will be the same dialog that you'll see when we uh, when we place a bracket order where I can actually add a target profit or a stop uh, loss order. But in this case, since I selected the menu item stop loss, then only the stop loss is checked. I can uh, manage the number of ticks away from the fill that I had, and I can place order. I can cancel that one. And I'll go back and show you the other workflow, which is um, if I want to bracket this order. Now, technically, it is not a uh, putting in a bracket order. It is placing two OCO orders, the stop loss and the target profit, around the fill price. And again, um, it's that same dialog. This time, both items are checked. And I can um, configure. Uh, the um, the parameters here, place order, and I see both OCOs are now working in the market. I'll cancel out of these and show you the bracket order workflow, which is very, very similar. So by default, uh, these new order types are off in preferences. So as a customer, you'll have to go in and add them uh, or turn them on, just like with integrated client. Um, so going into preferences, you go down to this trading and symbol settings, and all of these uh, all of these new trading settings are can be configured per symbol. So you go into this category called symbol settings, and just like with integrated client, I can uh, configure settings for all symbols, or if I add symbols to the list here, then I can configure um, uh, individual symbols uh, explicitly. I'll go into the setting for all symbols. In the new release, you will have to just uh, turn on, check the box, turn on bracket orders. And then if you want to customize any settings, if I want five ticks profit, five ticks loss, um, or four ticks loss, I can set that here. Same thing with trailing orders. Uh, the user will have to check this box and turn on trailing stops, trailing limits. And then they can configure uh, what value uh, the order will trail. And and then same thing with iceberg orders. Um, toggle it on, set visible percentage or visible number of contracts. I'll leave that as is. And you can see here as I toggle on preferences for bracket orders that this item here in the, the toolbar for the trading interface will show and hide the bracket preference. So I need to reset here. Um, it should take the default. Um, I have some other default set right now. Um, but as we have in other areas of the interface, I, I have a running history of custom settings that I've set so I can quickly get back to 5 and 5 for the sake of this demo. 
And just like all other um, custom modes that we have on the hot at this point, um, bracket mode is enabled. I've selected it. It's a competing mode, just like integrated client. Um, it's a competing mode with OCOs. So bracket mode is selected, but my next order will not be a bracket until I toggle it on and the orange color indicates that my next order uh, will be a bracket order. Same thing with on the buttons here on the trading interface, uh, we show a bracket icon, um, or a bracket on either side of the buttons that shows that my next order will be a bracket order. So I'll go ahead and um, place an order. Actually, I'm sorry, I, I had this set from a previous demo. Um, I had icebergs turned on. So I'm back at bracket mode. I'm going to place an order. Um, just like we saw before, these check boxes for target profit and stop loss are visible in the confirm dialog. This time, my order price is also shown. So it shows the, the, the orders in relation to the order price. And if I want to, I can override this, customize settings. Etc. And so I'll place order, and I see uh, my order um, in the market, my originating order in the market, and it's it has a bracket icon next to it. Uh, you might have seen temporarily the two OCO orders show up here in the working orders tab, and then disappear. They're just there to give me an indication. But if I go to the all orders tab then I see that I have my parent order working and then two OCO orders that are parked. And if I cancel that originating order, um, it will cancel the two child orders. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this order and um, move it up into the market. I should get filled. And then my two OCO orders are uh, triggered and are now working in the in the market. What I also did show in this case was that uh, with a bracket order, I was able to set my target profit as a trailing limit and my stop loss as a trailing stop. So those these two OCO orders will follow the market um, and and help me maximize. Uh, my profit and minimize my um, my stop loss there. I'll turn off bracket mode for now uh, so that I can show um, uh, separate trailing limit orders as well as an iceberg order. So just like with integrated client, there's a drop down where you can tell the system that you want um, trailing limits or stops or both. And then, like the other controls in CQG Desktop on, on this trading interface, um, I have to uh, click the control to set it to on. And by doing that, you can see the difference here in the order placement buttons. When the mode is on, um, just like the order ticket in integrated client, I can see that I can place a trailing limit order based on this uh, price selection, or I can also have the, altern um, the alternate mode to place a straight up limit order if I want. So I'm, I'll go ahead and place a trailing limit order. It goes into the market. It has a special icon that indicates that it's trailing. That's trailing orders, and it will behave accordingly um, to our trailing algorithms. Um, and move up with the market um, as expected. Lastly, I'll show um, iceberg orders. So iceberg is a duration, just like with um, in integrated client. You can find that in the duration uh, dropdown. Uh, previously, it was disabled because I had trailings on, and so those two order types don't mix and we show that it's disabled. So I have to turn off trailings, select iceberg day. I'll increase my order size. 
you see that um, the control shows up here where um, it takes my default that I've set in preferences for the visible size in terms of percentage. I can toggle that to number of contracts, uh, toggle it back. So this is a simple override for preferences. I just got filled on one of my OCO orders for the bracket. Dismiss that. And so just like with integrated client, um, as people are used to, select a price. I see the iceberg. Oops. Sorry. I released the price for some reason. Um, I can, again, override in the confirmation dialog if I want. And I see my order of 100 working in the market. Um, but it will be visible size uh, as per settings. So I see it as 100, but the market sees it as 10. It has a special icon here, and then I can see the type as iceberg and, and day uh, here in the order window. So that's the updates that I have to show. We have a blog post that walks through all of what I've shown today on news.cqd.com. It's also on our website on the What's New page for CQD Desktop. And on mhelp.cqd.com, uh, all of these uh, topics are um, embedded in the appropriate areas within the help files.